MTG fans, I'm here to talk about Etherworks Marvel. It officially got banned. Now, guys, I am dead tired. I just got out of a six-hour um, biology uh, lab, so um, excuse my tiredness. But I had to make this video. Etherworks Marvels uh, got banned, and I'm going to tell you my opinion on it. Um, first off, I played in three PTQs, um, so that's Pro Tours. Um, three preliminary Pro Tours in standard um, during the past six weeks. Excuse me, eight weeks I've played. Excuse me, three and eight weeks. And I can tell you that um, my thoughts on this is that, yeah, a lot of the decks um, were running Etherworks Marvel with um, Ulamog. I mean, and then people were coming up with variants. And um, to me, there was a lot of things to prevent this banning. Um, cards, there's a lot of green cards that just destroy target ar artifact. But response, Etherworks Marvel, people can kind of cast it as almost a, in a weird way, kind of like an interrupt almost. Because if you were to go destroy it with a green card that says destroy target artifact, for for great example, Appetite for the Unnatural, or um, one colorless, one green, it just says that there's a card you can cycle for one green. Um, Disserence, you can basically just destroy target artifact. They can in fact tap it um, in response. So it's kind of like a sorcery almost drop at this point. Um, there are certainly things like Fragmatize that could get rid of it, you know. But, and also I could say that, you have to understand, the odds of hitting an Ulamog, even if there's four in the deck, which a lot of decks only ran three main. But your best odds with four in a deck, your best odds with four in a deck were below 45% of getting it. That's why a, a lot of um, Marvel decks are kind of, I don't want to say easy to beat, but heads up, you stood a chance. Probably going to a game three though, because um, your cyborg is going to be very you, you know utilized in a matchup like that. So what do I think? It didn't have to be banned. Um, certainly with a lot of banning. So here's what's happening in response to all these. So let, let's ban. So there's Sahili Riley and Feldar Gar a Guardian. So that's that's in the format. So let's ban that deck. So what's the next deck that emerges? A deck that can play. Because it could match versus Healy Riley when it was around with Philadelphia Guardian. So the next deck, Marvel, comes, and that opens up the door for Marvel. What do we do? We ban Marvel. So what's the next bans? When are the next bans? So I'm going to tell you when these take effect. Um, immediately on online play, these take effect. So Caesar's Hunger was already dropping, it was losing um, well over 60% of its value, and it's going to go back to where it was uh, 6 to. Eight dollar card, if that. Um, that's where it's probably going to fall into. Um, so you can get Ulamog, by the way. You can cast it through. You throw it in your graveyard and use it through Liliana's Death Majesty. See, this Hunger is not a dead card, um, but you certainly felt the value hit. If you bought into Ulamogs, say six weeks ago, yeah, you got screwed on your money. Um, that's why I don't like bannings too much. But this could have been justified a little bit. I can easily make an argument that I played in the PTQs. I played more against red. Blue control with torrential gear hawks than I did Marvel decks. I'm just gonna put that out there for you. One PTQ that I played in, online PTQ, a preliminary pro tour, 60% of the field featured torrential gear hawk in their deck at a sum format. Um, it was either blue white control, blue red control. So what are, what are we gonna do next now? So what's this open the doors up to? Let's first talk about the bannings. So the bannings um, immediately take place June 14th online immediately, just like that. So online, paper, you're going to drop. So if you are if you can get any value out of this, if you're watching this video and you're just like, I, if I, you can cap any value off of your Ulamogs, do them now. I mean, that, that, that that's really it. June 19th is when it's going to strike paper play. So you do get one Friday Night Magic play out of your Ulamog Marvel deck, I guess, right? Um, so Etherworks Marvel has been banned, and because of the bandings, the next update of bans... Um, and then, you know, just for the next update when they do bans and restricted, it's not going to take place until after the Pro Tour of Our Devastation, which is on August 28th. So, boy, we get about, you know, maybe two and a half months before the next bannings, you know. But, but so, so what's next? All right, so we keep on banning the best decks is, is what's happening. Um, so what are we going to do next? So that opens up the door for Marty Vehicles. Certainly, I, I played Blue Mardu, but I'm going to tell you the most important thing this is going to open the door up for. People are going to say Zombies. It's going to open up the door for Zombies. No, it's not. Zombies is a weak deck virtually, and people might contest that it's not weak. 
it's 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 weak if you're just running mono black zombies trying to buff up everything. I mean, things can be fatal push, they can be, you know, grass the darkness. I mean, fumigates get rid of them, you know. I mean, planar outbursts get rid of them. You know, I mean, <laughs> the suns, you know, that deals 3 damage to every creature for that's a red card. Um dust to dawn can just destroy um zombies that are buffed. I mean, honestly, when you're playing versus zombie deck, you're going to get rid of Desigraph Colossus, and also you're just going to get rid of Lord of the Accursed. And Lord of the Accursed says all other zombies get plus one, plus one, so it does not directly get plus one, plus one. And that's why Metallic Mimic should be ran in mono black decks um, for that reason. But still, black green is what this opens the door up for, because black green versus Mardu, in my experience, heads up it is really good. You're going game three versus Mardu. Um, in PTQ, this is in preliminary standard play. So this is going to open up the door for green-black, um, green-black counters, winning constrictor. Um, also, to some backdoor loops, I think just Planeswalkers become a lot better now. The Liliana Last Hope just becomes increasingly a lot better um, because now your people are going to be half the force to, because part of Marvel decks was part of control. So now we're going to go back to the whole Gear Hulk deck that we're going to see predominantly, and we're going to see Mardu vehicles. Zombies are going to take a step up, but Black Green, this opens up the door for Black Green. If you want to see my previous play, the video quality is not the best, but I actually show you how I beat <laughs> with Black Green and was in the top five until the last round in a preliminary PTQ event in standard. So that's a Pro Tour preliminary event. Um... And realistically, you can see how I beat somebody who had three torrential gear hulks all on the board at the same time. They cast it all four during the game. I shot that footage. You can see it in my videos. So go ahead and check that out, by the way. So um, anyway, that's it. So this hurts consumers because realistically, just the bannings of what Magic has done. When I started playing Magic, when I was playing Magic, what you would do is just make your core sets better. You know, you would you you would put things in the core set like that would resolve some of the dominant decks. Now they just ban things. So what's the next banning going to be? You know, now we're going to see a lot of Zendikar decks. Um, you know, we're going to see a lot of Gideons. We're going to see a lot of, I mean, you would have to think blue-red would be a very dominant deck. I mean, if it was seen 60% in the field um, about a month ago in the, in the uh, Pro Tour that I was playing in online, why wouldn't it see more of the field? I think Mardu steps up. I did play blue Mardu. It didn't work as well as a green-black, but I did, lose, I, I did lose to a Marvel deck. That I went game three with a Marvel deck, and that's what I'm trying to say. There was so much removal from uh, Marvel, but... And you have to understand, if you can remove their Etherworks Marvel from, you know, just destroy it, they only had, they had a below a 45% chance of hitting Ulamog. With four in their deck, and a lot of ran just three. Um, so, I mean, in, in that instance, you're, 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 you're below 41, 40% to even hit Ulamog with an Etherworks Marvel. So, that's why you'd see in a lot of games, people would hit, you know, they would use Ulamog and then... Really, they was kind of miss. Um, that being said, I can see why it's justified because either works Marvel was definitely taking over the field. But we can make the same argument for blue red. You know, it's, but blue red's not as dominant, but it's certainly dominant. I mean, it's definitely dominant deck. So what? What now? Well, green black, I think, is what you have to look at. And Ulamog can still be used. You know, you can use Nahari, the Harbinger. You know, it brings a creature or artifact right on in, into the battlefield. It comes in with haste. Yeah, you return it back to your hand, but, you know, that can be pretty good. And Liliana's Death Majesty. You could throw in Ulamog into your graveyard. Um, it doesn't cycle like a mackerel or like the other, you know, predominant Eldrazi uh, the creatures, and you can just Death Majesty reanimate it right into play. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely ways that you can drag out Ulamog, and I wouldn't just go selling off all your Ulamogs right now um, unless you have somebody that's going to trade for them, or you can sell them somewhere where they have not appreciated the banning quite yet. But other than that, guys, I mean, my opinion on it is that it's going to open up the door for Black Green, Mardu's back in the scene, Blue Red is definitely going to be a dominant deck. I mean, that's hard to contend with, but 
Um, Hour of Devastation is also going to change the format too a little bit if you've seen some of the pre-release cards, which I'll, I will be talking about in my channel. Anyway, guys, I'm going to make this very succinct and quick. I hope you like and subscribe the video. If you want to talk about more gaming or Magic the Gathering or just collectibles, you can just feel free to hit me up or write in the comment section. But that's my opinion. I don't think personally it should have been banned, but I can see why it was. But what I'm trying to say is what are we going to do? Ban the next deck? You know, ban the, the next best deck? Because nowadays, everybody copies decks. When I played, that didn't happen because, quite frankly, people use strategy. They didn't just copy decks. Um, nowadays, you know, you have a lot of theme decks. You know, humans, you got, you know, vehicles, you got... You know, back when I played, you maybe had goblins and cabalds. This is back in 94, 95. I was like five years old. I, I was playing in Arena League. So, anyway, that's my opinion on that, guys. Alright guys, hit that like and subscribe button and check out future videos. And check out my play. You can tell that Black Green is a dominant deck. I show you that it's a dominant deck. So, um, go ahead. Now I think Black Green just gets a lot better. And I think Mardu does too as well.